Hey everybody, Dom here. Today I'm gonna to show you a typical stretch routine. Uh, it kind of changes as I go, depending on like what part of my body is the most sore, but I always stretch before and after training. It's super important. So today I'm gonna to show you a little bit of what I do. Now it is very important to make sure that you're always warmed up before you start stretching. So don't just come into the gym and just stretch while you're super cold. Uh, it's just not too good for your body and it's not too good for your muscles. Uh, if you think about your muscles as a rubber band, if you put a rubber band into the freezer and then you know let it get cold and take it out and then you start stretching it, a lot of times it's gonna snap. So you don't wanna be tearing your muscles or pulling them or anything like that. So always warm up a bit. Um, some things that I like to do, just like jogging around the gym. So I'll do laps around, uh, if there's any trampoline or tumble track or air track, something like that. I'll jog, I'll do some jumps, some hops, and, and things like that just to get myself a bit warmed up before I actually start doing my stretch routine. So the main parts of my body that I make sure I stretch before and after a session are always gonna be my wrists because I do a lot of stuff involving my hands like handsprings, Valdez, touchdown rise, all kinds of skills like that, uh, round offs, cartwheels, anything that involves me putting my hands down, I need to make sure my wrists are nice and stretched out. I also stretch out my shoulders a bit, um, and that can be done by just hanging from a bar, just doing like basic stretches, which I'll show you. Um, some other parts that I make sure I stretch always is obviously the lower half. Um, I use my legs more than anything when it comes to tumbling and tricking, so I always make sure I'm doing my split stretches, stretching out my, uh, my hamstrings, my groin, my quads, my calves, and then very important is stretching out your ankles. So I'll show you guys some of the ankle stretches that I do because um, that is obviously, as a lot of you guys have seen, my most common injury, always tends to be my ankles. And that's very common with tumblers and trickers alike is it's usually gonna be an ankle sprain or sometimes like broken ankle, things like that. But that's why stretching is important because stretching will be your biggest injury prevention. Now, a super simple wrist stretch that I like to do all the time is just starting by stretching out my wrists in different ways. So always start for me is put my hands out like this, fingertips facing myself, and then I put my hands on the ground. Now, when I do this, I try to make sure my arms stay as straight as possible. Don't mind the crazy uh, buzzing noise over there. It's just the door getting blown by the wind because we're in Louisiana and storms are pretty common here. So here, keep my arms nice and straight, trying not to bend them, okay? Straight arms and I lean back, all right? Now this is stretching out this whole area of my wrist. Very, very important. And then from that position, fingertips up this way, Keep my elbows nice and straight, best you can. And then I lean forward. This one's always funny because it looks like my hands are about to explode. <laughs> um, as I do these, I hold them normally about 10 seconds each, uh, sometimes a little bit longer, just depending on how I feel that day. All right, this way, fingertips out in front of me, lean forward, keeping the arms nice and straight. Uh, doing these stretches also helps a lot with circulation. Some of you guys who have done tumbling, trampoline, tricking, anything acrobatic, when you're doing flips, sometimes you'll notice how the blood will rush to your hands and it hurts a lot when you're doing certain flips. Um, stretching, warming up a bit before doing any of that activity normally will help stray away from that. So it'll help with that, like that hard, like blood pressure pain in your hands. Okay, now the last wrist stretch that I like to do is this way. So if my fingers are pointing down, look kind of like a zombie walking, put my hands here. Okay, so I'm pushing my wrists into the floor, keeping my arms as straight as I can and then I lean back, all right? So one more time, I'm this way, leaning back, arms are nice and straight, flip them this way, lean forward, arms are nice and straight, this way, lean forward, arms are nice and straight, and then arms this way, and then lean back. All right, a pretty good stretch for your shoulders is just hanging. Now this is also really good for your back. What this does is it'll alleviate some of the pressure in your back. So by doing this, you're lengthening out your spine. It's, uh, it's starting to stretch out my shoulders a bit and I feel it quite a bit and it feels very nice. Now, it doesn't feel too good on my hands because I'm heavy, so I have to hold myself up, but it does help a lot with opening up the shoulders, stretching them out, and also relieving some, some pressure in your lower back. Now, along with hanging, another good shoulder stretch is the very, very super obvious one. You've probably done it in any uh, gym class or like fitness class you've done, just holding it across your body and pulling nice and tight. Try not to let it droop too much. You don't want it way up here. Just straight across and pull. It'll also help if you kind of turn your body a little bit. So as you're pulling with your arm, you're kind of pushing this arm away. So pushing and pulling. All right, once you finish one arm, do the other. Now, another thing, uh, like I mentioned before, is just holding these stretches for about 10, 15 seconds, making sure that you're breathing as you do them. Um, depends on how sore you are or how much you're trying to stretch, whether it's before or after, but you can stretch as much or as long as you want to. Uh, I mean, it's very, very good to stretch a bunch. I stretch very often, but uh, you can overstretch. You don't wanna be like just stretching for far too long and doing like five minutes for each hold. Uh, it's actually not too good for your muscles. It'll be a, a little too loose. And that could also lead to some injuries. 
So another one that I like to do for my shoulders is, normally it's better if you have someone to help you with it. Um, I have my arms straight out behind me, and then I have someone grab them and lift them up. So I try to keep my body up straight and then have someone lift, and then that starts stretching out this whole part of my shoulder. A uh, way that's similar to this, you can do on your own, is just on the floor. And then you put your arms behind you and just kind of go back as far as you can. Um, trying not to let your arms go out to the side too much, trying to keep them straight behind you. Uh, like, like I said, it is a little bit easier if you have someone to do this for you, but you know, it works. Um, on that same token, doing it this way, you could also lay down on your stomach and then have someone do the same thing, grabbing your arms and pulling them up for you. Now on to what for me is the most important part and that is the lower half. So that is gonna be my legs and especially my ankles. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about my split stretches, um, right, middle, left, all that stuff. I just did that weird like right, middle, left, even though I meant like right, middle, left. Anyway, and then I'll show you the ankles. Okay, so I always start my split stretches in this way. So I start with a good lunge. Uh, it's, it's good and important to try not to lean forward as you do this. Uh, try to lean your chest back and push your hip down into the floor. You'll feel it stretching all through this area and hold that for quite a bit. It's also important to make sure that your toes and your knees, I did that backwards again, my brain today. So it's also important to make sure that your knee is not going past your toes as you're doing this stretch, okay? Because then it's just not properly doing the stretch the way it's meant to be. So try not to let this happen. So you wanna make sure your foot's planted nice and firm. Walk it out in front of you a little bit if you have to, to make sure that your knee is not going past your toes. And then push and hold. And again, 10, 15 seconds, whatever. So I'm gonna go through this a little bit quicker. I'm not gonna sit and make you wait and watch all 10, 15 seconds of each stretch. So from this position, what I do is I lean back. So I kept that foot right there, kept this knee right here, and I just straightened out the knee that was in front. And what I do from here is lean forward. Now, as I do this, I try to get my nose to my knee. You'll feel it pull through here a ton. Right now I have my toe pointed and I will do the same stretch, but also I will flex my foot. And you'll notice when you do that, you'll feel a whole nother part of your leg being stretched. Uh, for this right here, this feels nice and good throughout, but I feel it a lot in my hamstrings. And then when I do this, it engages my calf a ton, which I really need to stretch because I have very big calves, but they're also very tight, so they need to be stretched out quite a bit. And again, same thing on the other side. So I'm pushing, knee is not going past my toes. And then from this position, I'm going to this position, leg straight, didn't really move my foot or my other leg. Lean forward, hold right there, and then flex. What I do after those lunge stretches on each leg is, going from this position to this position, when I go from here, what I like to do is go from this position into my splits. So there's when I slide down and I try to hold up nice and tall as best I can. Now, I understand this is not going to be this easy for a lot of you guys. Uh, splits do take a lot of time to get from a lot of people. It is hard to maintain the flexibility, which is why you need to stretch often. But as you can see, I'm pretty good. I used to have them all the way down, but uh, you know, I've been slacking a little bit on my own stretching. So I need to get back into it. But it's very important to make sure that as you're doing this, you're not turned too much to the side. You want your hips nice and square, meaning that this knee is facing straight up, your other knee is facing straight down. So neither is turned out. And now, once again, with the other side. So I go from this lunge position, straighten it out, and then I slide down. My left is super tight right now. Uh, nowhere near down as much as it should be. But hold in this position as much as you can and try to sit up. I really feel that and hold. So a way that I like to segue into my middle splits, uh, either, I either go from my right or my left and then do the middle in between. So what I would normally do is once I go from my right, what I would do from this position is to get into my middle, I would just turn my hips and now I'm into that middle, middle split position, trying to keep my legs as straight as possible. You don't want them bent. Uh, that is a different stretch that I can show you, but you wanna keep them as straight as you can. I am nowhere near all the way down right now. Um, a little bit too tight and didn't warm up quite enough. So, you know, just for the purpose of the video, I'm not gonna try to push myself too hard. And yeah, these are your middle splits. All right, now onto the ankles. Now this is super, super, super paramount for, for stretching, for tumbling, tricking, trampling, all that stuff. So what you wanna do with this stretch, the way that I like to do it, this is to stretch out the tops and front of your ankle. Now how I do this is, while on the knees, put your feet behind you. You don't wanna be onto your toes. You want your feet nice and flat. So trying to get that bridge right there as flat as you can get it. Hope you guys like my socks, yeah? Like my pair of thieves socks. So from this position, you sit. All right, now this right here might already be enough for some of you. If you feel a lot of, a lot of tension right there, do it. And if it's hurting, then you're going too far. 
Um, something I forgot to touch on earlier that I'll touch on now is when stretching, it's very important to make it uncomfortable but never painful. The second it starts to hurt a lot, it's too much. So you wanna stretch where it's a little bit uncomfortable because that actually means you're doing it, you're stretching, but the second you start to hurt a lot, you're going too far, you need to back off a little bit. So here, this, for a lot of you guys, will already be at that like discomfort level. Stay there, that's okay. Now for those of you that wanna challenge yourself a little more and this isn't getting it too much on the tops of the ankles, you go from this position, lean back. So now the fronts of my feet, so the tops of my ankles are stretching and pushing forward and I'm holding this position to stretch out the front. Super windy here uh, quite often. You can hear the trees out there like scraping against the building. Sorry, but it is what it is. So the last and final part of the ankle stretch that I'll show you is making sure you're stretching the backs of the ankle. So this will help stretch your calves as well, but this is gonna stretch the backs of the ankle. So your Achilles tendon, um, that is a super, super, super important one to make sure that you have some good flexibility there. You do not want to mess with that tendon in your body. Uh, a lot of you guys know what that is. For those of you who don't, um, that is one of the most important parts of your leg that helps you walk. And if that does get damaged, it is a hard recovery. So make sure that that's nice and flexible. You're stretching that as much as you can and make sure that if it is super tight, don't go too far with it. Like I said before, you wanna make sure that it's just a little uncomfortable. You don't want it to be painful because that is one that you don't want to mess with too much. So this is a stretch that can be done at home, anywhere. So you can find a wall, anything solid that you can push onto where you can push, okay? So I'm gonna use this wall here in the gym. Now, what you want to do is step back and put your heel onto the floor. So I do one foot at a time. Right now I'm doing my right foot. So my heel is on the floor. If you do not feel much of a stretch at all, walk back as far as you can so that you can feel it, all right? So here I am like this. Now you can put the other foot on the floor. I tend to lift mine up so that I make sure that I'm getting a good stretch on that leg. And then you switch. So again, five, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, whatever, and stretch each side until you feel like you've adequately done the stretch, all right? And then you can do both. Slowly alternate. You don't want to go super fast. Slowly alternate and this will help stretch the backs of the ankle. Now, similar to that stretch, instead of pushing against a wall, if you can find somewhere, you could do this on stairs. Um, right here in a gym, like obviously there are a lot of uneven surfaces. So if you can find a place where you can step and have your heel hang off, that'll kind of do the same thing that you were doing up against the wall. Just another way to do it. So you can stand, heel hanging off, alternate your feet. It is kind of hard to do both feet with this one unless you're hanging on to something because your feet will slide off, but this is just one more way to do that simple stretch to help keep this tendon nice and flexible. All right, so I truly and firmly believe that stretching is the number one way to prevent injury. Uh, that has been my saving grace for a lot of my hard falls, and it has helped me not get injured. Obviously, I have suffered some injuries, but you know, accidents do happen, but I really do feel that with my flexibility, it has saved me from a ton of injuries with the sports that I do. One last thing, do not be afraid to get creative and do some of your own stretches at home. You can come up with whatever ways to stretch any part of your body. Uh, it doesn't have to necessarily be the exact routine that I do. These are just some things that I believe have helped me and hopefully they will help you. But do not be afraid to get creative and just start messing around. And again, just make sure obviously it's not painful, but stretch whatever parts of your body that you're using for whatever you're using them for, whether it be like different, any type of sport, you know? So just make sure you're stretching. Now that you're all warm and stretched out, you can check out some of my other tutorials and get to working on some of these skills.